This is my second time going to Masu in Tongmu Village with Bei Bei Zhang, who is currently the fifth generation of her family tea farm that produces the world's first black tea, Zhengshan Xiaozhong, or Lapsang Xiaochong. Tongmu Guan is an UNESCO World Heritage Site. According to Bei Bei, locals like her never say Tongmu Guan as an origin reference for the Lapsang tea, but Tongmu Village. Tomu Village is located in Wei Mountain Range, and is the core production area for Lapsang Black Tea. Tomu Guan is roughly half an hour up north from Tomu Village area. Guan in Chinese means checkpoint, hence Tomu Guan really is a historical checkpoint site that marks the border between Jiangxi Province and Fujian Province. Tomu Village is a restricted area for both any Chinese who is not a local villager and foreigners, and there is a checkpoint for anyone that goes in. Lucky for us, Bebe happens to be one of the village community members, and she was able to work her magic. Tongmu Village has 12 production teams, and Masu is one of them. Each team is composed by a few families that scattered in a small area in Tongmu Village, and is managed by Tongmu Village's committee. According to tea scholars in China, Masu and Guadun produce the best quality Lapsang teas because of their high altitude locations, excellent weather conditions, an extraordinarily rich biodiverse environment. Masu is located at elevation about 1,200 meters and has about 10 families that produce both Lapsan Saochong and Jinjunmei. Among them, only Beibeis and two other families still make traditional smoked Lapsan black tea by using a very particular type of pine wood called horsetail pine. This was my last tea trip in 2021, and I'm glad it was Masu, since it really is one of the most beautiful, historical, and mysterious places I have been to. The authentic traditional smoked Lapsan Saochong tea is becoming more and more scarce even in China. And my mission for this trip is to show you the work behind producing a traditional smoked Lapsan black tea in this secretive village to unravel the mystery of why this tea is disappearing and to show you the truth of the challenges this tea is facing and will continue facing in the future. Hi there, um, this is Rainy from Sariti. So I'm here in Masu, Tongmu Guan and I'm here for the Lapsang Saochong from this year. So right now I'm with my father, whose name is Bei Bei. Hi. Hello. Hello. So this part is the part that 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 is 都就要踩了 Qinlou is a unique architecture that exists only in Tomu area. 
In the past, it served both residential purpose and making lapsang teas. Nowadays, it's only used for producing tea, and only authentic smoked lapsangs are produced in a qinglong. It usually has three to four levels, and each level usually has a smoked room or a withering room. When we arrived, freshly picked tea leaves from that early morning were just being withered. As you can see, the smoke room on the first floor is built directly above the kiln, so the smoke can permeate through the gaps between bricks on the ground. The smoke and heat would then go up through the ceiling that is a thin mat made by bamboo in order to wither the leaves that are laid on it on the second floor. During this stage, flavoring the tea leaves with smoke is not the objective yet, but to wither the leaves by the heat that is generated slowly and naturally by burning wood. This traditional method takes twice as much time as by modern withering machines, roughly five to six hours. Even though Qinglo is supposed to be a cultural heritage, it is only built by wood and hard to maintain. Plus, making smoke lapsang is very labor and time consuming. As this tea is becoming less demanded, many qinglo are being torn down. This becomes a chain effect and creates a negative cycle that results in even less smoked lapsang tea's production. After rolling, this is the shape of leaf that we will get. So, if I get it closer, it's just kind of like the leaf it gets rolled inside. Yeah. And you can unroll it. If you unroll it open, then you get the then you get the whole leaf. There we go. So this is before and after. 所以我伸進去,它裡面是熱的嘛,越下去就越熱,它會慢慢熱出來。And because uh, Masu is at a relatively higher altitude, which is about 1,400 to 1,500 meters, the temperature up here is relatively colder, and that's why normally they would have covered the basket with Um, cloth, so just, just like that. in order to keep the tea leaves warm. And something that's really magical to me um, is that... So during this natural process of fermentation or like oxidation, um, green raw leaves will slowly turn red because um, the enzymes and the chemical compounds in tea leaves start to react with oxygen. And if you dig your hand, if you dig your hand all the way down, then it's really, it's actually really warm in here. But this basket has nothing like artificial that's a warming, you know, warming up. It's just staying here by itself. However, the temperature under, underneath, under all the tea leaves is so warm. Basically, um, at the end of um, the very last process uh, stage of the traditional smoked lapsa. Um, and this is Mr. Zhang, who is the father of Bei Bei. Um, and so he's a real ex the real expert here. Essentially, what Mr. Zhang was doing 
was too skillfully laid for Mantis tea leaves on the bamboo trays, as flatly and evenly as possible. Each tray can hold about 1 to 1.5 kilograms, which is about 2 to 3 pounds of tea leaves. He then will take tea trays into the smoke room and lay them on the wood shelf one by one. Because making smoked tea can also be very energy consuming, farmers will put as much tea into the smoke room as possible every time. <laughs> We waited about 1.5 hours for this process to be done before finally getting the fire started. Those big pieces you're seeing now are the horsetail pine wood. The local government of Wu City has placed a very strict regulation on this particular pine tree and has officially enlisted it as an endangered species that only tea farmers from Tongmu village have some access to, though very very limited. In reality, such pine wood is not burned from the beginning to the end. Mr. Zhang said they only need some pieces for that piney smoky flavor to be perfumed on tea leaves. However, because of the government's restriction and how energy and time consuming this process can be, many farmers in the area just choose to only produce unsmoked teas. What's even worse is that there are many artificially flavored fake smoked lapsang teas on the market. Meeting Bebe was totally unexpected, yet the most serendipitous experience. Getting into Tombu village wasn't easy. Bebe's family's hard work of preserving the authentic smoked Zhenshan Xiaozhong is even harder. Bebe is the only child of her generation and she told me that she actually studied business English in college. But as she got older, she realized what they are doing, what her family has been doing for the last four generations is more than just producing a black tea, but preserving a cultural heritage. This is essentially what motivated her to come back and inherit the family tradition, be true to herself, her upbringing, and her teas. As I stood in the rain that day watching the weak smoke 
slowly evaporating into the air. I only hoped more people, tea drinkers or not, Chinese or not, can learn the truth about this tea and those that worked so hard to make this tea survive. Only then we can help to support its authenticity. That was the end of the uh, production processing for the smoked, the traditional smoked lobs on some children. Now they're going to leave the tea leaves in there uh, to smoke them for up to two days. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy some of the unsmoked lobs on some children with the entire baby's family. So here we have Mr. John, baby's father, who's the smoked tea expert here, and baby, baby's grandma. Um, her grandpa and her mom. And happy sleeping! See you next time!